Welcome to Draw Studio. Today we're going to learn about the supinator and pronator muscles. Let's get started. We will start with the supinator muscles. The supinators are two muscles that sit on the surface of the lower arm. The first of these is the extensor carpi radialis longus. It originates on the side of the humerus, right at the bottom, above the lateral epicondyle. The muscle comes down and turns into a long tendon that inserts into the back of the hand at the base of the index finger metacarpal. Above the extensor carpe radialis longus is the brachioradialis. It originates on the outside, bottom third of the humerus. The muscle comes down and turns into a long tendon that inserts into the bottom of the radius on the lateral side. The brachioradialis is the innermost of these supinators, where the extensor carpi radialis longus is smaller and sits on the side closest to the elbow. The supinators sit on top of the extensors as they move towards their insertion point. The extensor carpi radialis longus sits next to the extensor carpi radialis brevis of the extensor group. They run parallel and insert next to each other on the back of the hand. As the supinators wrap around the arm, they will also cover a portion of the flexors on the palm side of the forearm. The two supinators originate on the outside of the arm, coming from behind the brachialis. Now let's look at the pronator. The pronator teres sits on the upper section of the palm side of the forearm. It originates at the medial epicondyle of the humerus. The muscle moves down at an angle to insert into the outside edge of the radius, about halfway down. The origin of the pronator teres is above the origin of the flexor muscles, and the pronator sits on top of this group. It is rarely seen as an individual muscle, but adds to the mass of the flexors on the surface. The pronator's insertion point is hidden underneath the supinators, and won't be seen from the surface. The supinators and pronator teres will work in conjunction to move the radius around the ulna in an action that we give specific names. Seeing the bones underneath first will help us understand these movements. When the arm is in the anatomical position with palms facing up, we call this supination. When the palms face down, we call this position pronation. When the hand is halfway between, where the palm faces the side of our body, we call it demipronation. Demi meaning partially. An easy way to remember which position is which is when the hand has the palms up in supination, you can hold a bowl of soup. Supination, bowl of soup. In supination, the radius and ulna are parallel to each other, making a number 11. In pronation, the radius has crossed over the ulna, making an X. Notice that the radius pivots at the upper outside of the arm and radiates or rotates around the ulna and the pinky side of the hand. The ulna remains a fixed point, which will help us analyze and draw the arm as it moves. Now let's see how the muscles create these movements. Because the pronator teres anchors to the inside of the arm and acts on the radius, if the hand is in supination and the pronator contracts, it will pull the radius over the ulna, putting the hand in pronation. Because the supinators anchor to the outside of the upper arm and act on the thumb side of the wrist, if the arm is pronated and they contract, they will pull on the wrist, bringing the hand back into the supinated position with palms up. It can get quite confusing to track the lower arm muscles as the hand moves between these positions. So focus on the fact that the supinators come from the outside of the upper arm and always travel to the thumb side of the wrist. When the arm is in supination, the thumb side is in line with the outside of the arm, so the supinators will be a straight line. When the hand is in pronation, 
the thumb side is on the opposite side of the origin. So the supinators will spiral over the arm as they aim for the thumb. The supinators will always start on the outside of the humerus and always aim towards the thumb, no matter what position the arm is in. This is very important to keep in mind as the lower arm rotates into complex positions. Now let's find the supinator and pronator muscles on the surface. This shape on the outside of the arm is the brachialis. That means that this thick shape emerging from behind it is the mass of the supinators coming down on the surface of the arm as it aims to the thumb side of the hand. This shape underneath would be the extensor group going to the back of the hand. Depending on the development of the figure, you may see a division between the brachioradialis and the extensor carpi radialis longus, or they may appear as a unified shape. On the palm side of the forearm, coming from the medial epicondyle, we can see a shape coming over at an angle towards the radius, which represents the pronator teres. Underneath this would be the mass of the flexor group, which the pronator teres visually groups with on the surface. Coming from the outside of the arm and wrapping around to the thumb would be the supinator group, covering the pronator and a portion of the flexor group. Now let's track the supinators and pronator as they move from supination to pronation. The palm facing up is supination. Then the pronator contracts to pull the radius over into demipronation before the palm faces completely down in pronation. In pronation, we can see the supinators spiraling from the outside of the arm to find the thumb on the inside of the arm. In supination, the supinator muscles are in a straight line from the outside of the arm to the thumb side of the hand. Keep track of the origin and insertion to trace the path of the supinators and draw them in any position. Remember all of these points when drawing the supinators and pronator. Analyze the anatomy on the surface of your reference and draw from observation and memory to help you learn. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to go to drosh.com for more information on these topics and many more. If you want to see more videos like this, like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you for the next one.